Today, we're going to be playing a fun little game of do or die. If you pick the correct box, you win a real cookie. But if you pick the wrong box, then you have to like the video and subscribe to the channel right now. One of the boxes has the cookie, and two of the boxes have my channel logo. I don't make the rules, but nonetheless, I'll be explaining Survivor do or die in the Monty Hall problem at the end of this video. Anyways, I hope you pick the correct box, and if you're right, here's your cookie. Please comment down below and I'll send you the cookie, but if you're wrong, subscribe to the channel and like the video. Don't worry, we're going to be diving into this awesome episode of Survivor and discussing all things about Tribal Council, immunity challenges, and the very confusing dilemma which is the Monty Hall problem. So make sure to stay watching so you don't miss any of it. It is currently December which means all month long leading up until Christmas I'll be making daily Survivor videos. Careful for spoilers for everything during the episode if you haven't seen it yet. I'll number all these things as we go along to stay organized, starting with the chaos after the Shan vote out. Shan, mm -hmm. Tribe has spoken. Number 20. This might be a little confusing starting things off, but please take a deep breath and bear with me. There's a lot of different conversations all happening at once, and I think they're all incredibly important to talk about. But at the same time, they're all cutting back and forth between each other, so I'm just going to be talking about all of these conversations separately. Starting with Liana getting angry at Danny and Deshaun for voting Shan out of the game. But they try to explain that it was Ricard's plan to blindside Shan and not their plan. Number 19. On the flip side of things, we have Xander jumping up and down with excitement in the shelter as he finally has an alliance he can work with. And if you look back at the season as a whole, this is one of the first times Xander's actually voted correctly. Obviously, this new alliance consists of Xander, Erica, Heather, and Ricard. Xander's going to do everything he can to keep this group of players together. As he said, he's willing to use his extra vote and idol for this alliance. A group of people that I actually trust and that I can work with. And we're saying final four? Oh my god, this is too good to be true. Number 18. Soon after, Liana left Danny and Deshaun alone, the two boys talked about what they're going to be doing moving forward without having the majority anymore. More than anything though, Deshaun is pissed off that he is getting blamed for blindsiding Shan, even though it was Ricard's plan all along. Without the good old previously on Survivor segment, we are given a flashback of Shan calling Deshaun a snake as she was walking out of tribal. She says that I'm a snake. Ricard, do you have my vote for a million dollars? Deshaun, you're a snake. Number 17. I think we can all agree Deshaun makes a bad move here by confronting Ricard about the entire Shan situation in front of everyone. Not only does he come off too aggressive in this situation, but he also chooses to do it during the night when everyone really wants to sleep. I think the idea itself was actually a pretty cool concept to paint the picture that Ricard is the biggest threat, but the classic case of strong intention and poor execution by Deshaun. Number 16. After everyone takes the night to cool off and try to relax, Ricard and Deshaun have a proper one-on-one -on -one conversation the next morning. It shows just how smart Deshaun really is as a Survivor player that he is self-aware enough to realize he took things too far the night before and wishes he could just go back and go right to sleep after Tribal. I think we're going to be getting a build-up to the final war between Ricard and Deshaun coming soon for who's going to win this season. Number 15. Heads up, lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations this episode as Leon and Deshaun come together to discuss what their future may look like. Honestly, Liana hasn't been anywhere near my favorite player this season, but I really feel bad for her in this position. For pretty obvious reasons, she feels like she can't trust Danny and Deshaun anymore, but at the same time, she has no one else she can work with in the game. Of course I want revenge. Of course I want Deshaun out. I mean, I agree with what Shan said last night. Like, that was a snake move. Number 14. Danny had a stellar opening to the season, but I felt like afterwards we haven't been given much of his perspective. I really liked watching Danny play Survivor, but I just have the feeling he won't win in the end. End. But in this case, we aren't talking about his survivor gameplay, we're talking about more of a personal and powerful moment with him discussing his father. The flashbacks overall this season have been very hit or miss for me, but I absolutely loved how it was utilized here. I was angry at him. You know, you want your dad to be Superman. Number 13. Danny and Deshaun aren't just alliance members, but I think they are really good friends. And so, Danny tries to explain why this day is so difficult for him, and if he's acting off, it has nothing to do with gameplay. It's just a really hard day for him. Normally, on this day, Danny would try to stay as busy as possible, but as many past Survivor players have explained, a lot of the time on the island is just boring downtime, giving Danny a lot of time to just think. From now on, I'm going to make sure I go visit his grave as much as I should. Um, 
talk to my mom about it more. Number 12, drop the four and leave the one because before we get started with the immunity challenge, we are going to be seeing some Jeff Probst fourth wall breaking action. Obviously, we all now know what the dangerous do or die twist ultimately was, but as Jeff Probst asked us last night, I'm going to turn the attention to you. Please comment down below if you would choose to participate or sit out of the challenge. Number 11, do or die time, baby. Personally, I thought it was weird how Jeff Probst kept describing it as, this is a new game, survivor, do or die. Going into the episode, I was convinced it was going to be Heather that got screwed over by this twist, and that's why she didn't get any screen time all season long. But although I'm almost never wrong, you can't always be right 100% of the time as Liana and Heather decide to set out of the challenge. I haven't seen anyone else talk about this, but this is a brutal challenge to incorporate a twist like this into, as we've seen it in Survivor Philippines with Malcolm. Sometimes people just have some shaky hands and will be eliminated within seconds. Just like that, Malcolm is out of this challenge, no shot at immunity. Number 10, obviously there was an anticlimactic ending to what was going to be Survivor Do or Die, as Deshaun dropped out within seconds of starting the challenge. I got a little bit of heat in last week's video for saying Danny has really been sucking at every single challenge, well obviously I'm going to be eating my words here as he ends up winning the immunity. Number 9, like always, I'll slow down the repulse puzzle so you can get a closer look and the answer is million dollar mistake. Number 8, after the challenge we learned that if Deshaun ends up getting lucky and winning the survivor do or die twist then he would become immune from the votes. So although it comes about in a really risky way, the result is almost best case scenario for Danny and Deshaun. See, if Deshaun gets eliminated, fine, no vote happens, whatever. But if Deshaun is able to survive, then that means both Danny and Deshaun will make it through another round of elimination. Number 7, in case Deshaun somehow survives and a vote will take place, the remaining 7 players still need to prepare for the tribal council, and ultimately it comes down between two different people. The first and more difficult plan to pull off is to send Ricard home. This is much more difficult because the only people fully locked in on this plan are Liana, Danny, and Deshaun. Erica ends up eventually becoming the swing vote, but we'll be talking about that in just a second. Number 6, the alternative plan is to vote Liana out of the game, and the people on board with this plan just so happens to also be in the majority alliance, consisting of Ricard, Xander, Heather, and Erica. Personally, I think it's in Xander's best interest to keep Ricard around as he can use Ricard card as a meat shield, but I think the smarter move for Heather and Erica would have been to keep Liana around and vote out Ricard. Number 5, I don't like to play too much close attention to the edit, but I really just think we got hinted at the winner of the season as Erica is debating between voting out Liana or Ricard. The vote comes down to keeping Alliance strong or voting out the big threat, and I absolutely love the confessional from Erica where she explains if Ricard stays in the game, then she has no shot. Anyone else thinking that Ricard and Erica will both make it to the end, with Ricard ultimately winning? If I don't take the shot now, now, Ricard could run away with the game and I have no chance. Number 4, Jeff Probst opens Trouble Council by explaining that this is the very last time that the Shot in the Dark can be played. Um, what? I was looking forward to the Shot in the Dark twist, but I guess until we see Survivor Season 42, we'll have to write it off as a failure. Number 3, here we go. We're going to be talking about how gameplay and real life intersect in Survivor, and specifically the discussion about how Deshaun felt about voting Shan out of the game. As a white male, I can relate the best to what Heather said. I think she said it perfectly by explaining that we are all growing. We're growing. We're learning. I had no idea that this was a conflict that was going on, and it breaks my heart to know that you are carrying this. I am learning and don't fully understand either, but I am more than happy to have discussions in the comments. But with that said, I'll be watching the comments insanely closely on this video, and if I see anything hateful or attacking other people, I will delete that comment without any warning. At the end of the day, isn't what makes Survivor so powerful 41 seasons later is the different perspectives and interactions between the players. We have seen it season after season with people battling their head against their heart. Number two, going from this extremely powerful moment to a random game of chance, we now have Survivor, do or die, or how it's more famously referred to as the Monty Hall problem. Ultimately, best outcome possible, but statistically speaking, he picked the wrong decision. Christian from Survivor David vs. Goliath explained it best on RHAP. One of the two other solutions is not being right. He, in fact, has collapsed both of the other options, D and C, and leaving only the best option of B and C. So in effect, Jeff is offering the choice of, Deshaun, do you want box A, or do you want the better of box B and C? And there are two more of B and C, so you have twice as many chances to get it right. Number one, Xander ends up playing his extra vote and Liana gets sent home. If you want to see more from Christian, click right here for my video on Survivor David vs. Goliath.